Hi, my name is Pastor Frank, and uh, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, losing your salvation. I hear people say all the time, if, uh, Pastor, can I lose my salvation? Some people believe uh, once saved, always saved. Other people believe you can lose your salvation. I personally think that uh, it's not that you lose your salvation, is that you choose to walk away from the faith. Uh, Jesus Christ does not give us salvation, that gift. The Father does not give us the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ and then take it away from us. That's not how God works. God has his covenants. God makes his promises, but he does not give us something and then take it back. That is wrong. That is not scriptural. I believe that you, the believer, can walk away from your faith. And I'm going to prove that today with some scripture. And uh, we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about the cost of following Jesus Christ. Now, in 1 Timothy 4.1, it specifically says that the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And we see that now. We see that many people are being, their ears are being tickled, they're following deceiving spirits, false doctrine. And uh, the important part is that you see here that in latter times, some will depart from the faith. So you're a believer. It's talking to believers here. You're a believer. But you, says here, have chose to walk away from the faith. It says in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines. Of demons. So we see here, you're a believer, but you chose to walk away. Not that you lost your salvation, not that Jesus gave it to you, and then you lost it, because our Lord doesn't operate that way. He makes his promises and his covenants, and he keeps them. It's impossible for God to lie. So you do not lose your salvation. You chose to walk away from the faith, and that's how you lost your salvation. And we know that in 1 Timothy 4.1, it specifically says in the latter times, that will happen. Now, Another place that I want to take you to is Hebrews 3.12. And we see here in Hebrews 3.12 that it says, Beware. So it's telling us, it's showing us, be cautious, you know, watch yourself, be alert. Okay, it's saying, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelieving in departing from the living God. So we see here again, it's a believer. And is warning them as a believer, it says, Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelieving. It's an evil heart of unbelieving, of walking away from the faith. And it says here, Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelieving in departing from the living God. So, we see here that it's a believer. They have chose with an evil heart to depart from the living God. So, we just read in 1 Timothy 4.1, in the latter days, many will depart from the faith, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits. And here we see that the believer chooses to walk away, and it says here that, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So again there, we see once again, you do not lose your salvation. You have chosen to walk away from the faith. And that's a very important because that's a big difference. That's a big difference because you have chosen to walk away from the faith. You have chosen to do contrary to what the word of God says. Not that God gave you something and took it away like an Indian giver. God does not do that. His covenant, his promises, God cannot lie. You have chosen to walk away from the faith. Let me read another one to you. Now we're going to Hebrews 10, 39. Hebrews 10, 39. And it says here, But we are not of those who draw back to perdition. What does perdition mean? Well, basically it means spiritually dead. <laughs> you're dead. You're, you're lost. You're gone. You're spiritually dead. And it's saying, and, and, and Satan was called the son of perdition, uh, as well as Judas. So we see here, but we are not, we're not of those who draw back 
to perdition, spiritually dead, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. So we are those who don't draw back, but we believe, okay, uh, to the saving of the soul. And that's Hebrews 10.39. So again... In Hebrews, he's talking to the Jews. No one, no one knows the author, but everyone believes it's Paul. And so you're a believer, and it's saying here you're believing. He goes, but don't be of those who draw back to perdition, back to being spiritually dead, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. So we know here that, and, and if you want to read before it, look at the scripture before it. It says, uh, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. And it says here, For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul uh, has no pleasure in him. And basically what they're doing is, they are following up on an Old Testament uh, saying. And so uh, you see here, that he's doing reference uh, to uh, the Old Testament, and it's probably in Deuteronomy, I believe it is, uh, or in Chronicles. But he he is making a promise from from the Old Testament. But then he goes on to say, "But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul." So again, you didn't lose your salvation. You drew back in this instance in Hebrews ten thirty nine. You drew back. Uh, to perdition, to being spiritually lost. So, can a believer lose his salvation? No, because God does not give it to you and then take it away from you. What happens is, you as the believer, you choose to walk away. And because you chose, you have uh, departed from the faith, you have lost your grace. And I can prove that to you now in another scripture in Galatians 5.4. So now we're in Galatians. I just gave you uh, let me just recap the, the scriptures. First Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4.1, Hebrews 3.12, and uh, Hebrews 10.39. We are not of those who draw back to perdition, to being spiritually dead. We don't do that. But we go to the saving of the soul. And so let's look at here in Galatians. What's happening in Galatians? In Galatians is the basically the whole contents of the book is the book of freedom. Uh, and it's saying here, if you read it, uh, we know that um, they've preached Christ, now they have believers, they have a church there, but what happens is that whatever they preached is now is being mixed with the law. So they're saying, the false teachers, uh, apostasy, heresies, all these guys, what they're doing is they're infiltrating the church, like Satan always does, he always inf infiltrates the church, and what happens is, now he's saying, hey, you can have Christ, that's okay, but you got to have Christ with the law. You have to mix the two. You have to have Christ and the law. And then that is not of God. Because why? We know that you can only be justified by the faith in Jesus Christ. You are made righteous. You are made justified by the blood of Jesus. By putting your faith in Jesus Christ. In the one whom he sent. You put your faith in him. Okay? That he rose from the dead. That he died on the cross for our sins. He rose from the dead, from the dead uh, on the third day. And he's coming back for his church. So we believe that. That's what we believe. And we don't need to mix it with the law. Or adding scripture to it. Which the Bible says a, a man is accursed. If you take any words out. And we know that what he's saying here is. You don't need to mix the law with Christ. Because let me read it to you. Galatians 5.4. Look what he's saying here. He says. You have become estranged. Again, did you lose your salvation? Did Christ give it to you and then take it away? No. He's speaking to believers here. You, the believer, have become estranged from Christ. So you had Christ and now you've isolated, you've departed, you've taken Christ away. You've, you've gone away from Christ. So you had Christ and now it says you're estranged from Christ. So you chose to walk away from the faith again. It's not that you lose your salvation. You chose to walk away from the faith. Galatians 5.4, again, is saying, saying this to believers. It says, you have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law. So, you have Christ. 
Now you're trying to be justified by the law when the law cannot justify you. It leads you to Christ and it leads you to death because you can never, ever uh, uh, keep the law 100%. So you will fail. You will die. So if you put your faith in the law, you shall die. But if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, okay, you're justified by faith. And he's telling the believers here in Galatians, you have estranged yourself. You have estranged yourself from Christ. You have departed from Christ, okay, and you've fallen from grace. So once again, that's proving that you have fall, fallen away from grace. Now, I think that's pretty clear. I know there's going to be some people that say, you can't lose your salvation. Uh, you know, maybe they've been in sin. Maybe they haven't been living right. Whatever the case may be. I'm not here to debate. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm telling you what the Word of God says. And we know that it's not that Jesus Christ takes away your salvation and you lose it. It's because you, the believer, have chose to not believe and walk away. Let me ask you a question. Paul said this. He said, I have finished the race. I ran the, way, the race. He ran the race. Okay? And he goes, he fought the good fight. The good fight of faith. He goes, I ran the race. I kept what? The faith. So the Bible tells us to endure till the end. Endure till the end. So if you think you're a believer and you get the mark of the beast, you again, you have chosen to walk away from Christ and follow the beast. Okay? If you go and get entangled with other uh, doctrine of demons that make you say you can have Christ, but you still got to do something else. There's nothing else you have to do. You have fallen from grace. It says that here in Galatians 5.4. It says in Hebrews 10.39, we are not of those who draw back to perdition. We don't draw back to being spiritually dead. Okay? We are those of the saving of the soul. So don't go back. Don't be drawn back to perdition, which is spiritually dead. It says that in Hebrews in, uh, Hebrews 10.39, Hebrews 3.12. It says that lest, you know, you've been drawn back. So we know, okay, we know that it's not that Christ takes it away. It's that you have chosen to walk away from the faith and you lost and you gave up your, you gave up your belief. You're not a believer anymore. You are now an unbeliever. You've walked away from the faith. You have not kept the faith to the end. Like Paul said, he wasn't boasting when he said that. He said, I ran the race. He goes, I have kept the faith. He knew that he did it, that he accomplished it to the end. And he was being poured out like a drink offering until they cut his head off. But he kept the faith. He ran the race. But he kept the faith to the end. He didn't give it up. So can you lose your salvation? It's not that Christ takes it away from you. It's that you forfeit it. You stop believing or you walk away from the faith. That's what it says here. And many will do that in the end times. The Spirit specifically says that. that many will fall away and be given up to deceiving spirits uh, and doctrine of demons. And we see that today. We see that today. But it's important that you know Jesus Christ doesn't give you something. Then take it away. You walk away from it. You chose that. Now, why are so many people walking away? Well, it would be foolish of me if I went ahead and didn't tell you to count the cost to follow Christ. Because many of you Christians are backsliding. Many of you uh, are giving up on the faith. And my job as a pastor is not to be your friend. Although I'm some of your friends on Facebook. I'm not here to be your friend. My job is to be a pastor and to teach you right. So before I'm your friend, I'm a pastor. I'm first with God. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Is for you, okay, to understand the cost of following Jesus Christ. Now... That we have to go to Luke 14. And I found a great, a great parable here. It says Luke 14 verses 25. Or actually verses 26 to 33. Luke 14, 26, 33. Now, it says. Uh, there was a multitude around him. And he said. If anyone comes to me. And does not hate his father and mother. Wife and children. Brother and sisters. Yes, his own life also cannot be my disciple. Wow, that's harsh. That's really harsh. You look at that and you say, whoa, uh, that's pretty harsh. First thing that jumps out at you is the word hate. Now, is Jesus Christ telling us to hate our parents, our loved ones, our brothers and sisters, our spouses? No. Let's get that out of your head. 
What he's saying is, he must be first. You can have no other idols before him. He must be number one. God is a consuming fire. If I get a lighter and I have a, a piece of paper and I light it, the, the fire is going to consume the paper and it's going to be all ashes. Well, that's what God does to us. Until we are all hit, until we submit in every area of our life, okay, until we bow down and submit, and he must be not only master, but Lord of every area of your life, he will continue to consume you because <laughs> he wants all of you. We were bought at a price and there's a cost. Now, verse 26, Luke 14, verse 26 to 33 explains it. It says, so he's saying, before you put your mother, brother, wife, children before me, you can't do that. Can have no idols before me. I must be first, first and always God number one. So we understand that. And then he says, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So first he wants to be number one in your life. And then he's telling you, not only do I want to be number one in your life, but you must die to self and you must die to the flesh, the world, and the devil. So now you have a battle going on within you and you're so used to being a certain way when you're in the world. Now you're with Christ. Now it's a sanctification process that the Holy Spirit is making you into the image and conforming you into the image of Christ. So you will look like Christ, be like Christ, act like Christ, submit like Christ, and do everything like Christ. Okay, now that's a process. We understand that. But as a believer, you continue to submit yourself. You continue to uh, not only submit yourself to the word of God, but to the Holy Spirit. And as you're doing that, uh, you're being a disciple of Christ and you're dying to self. It says, pick up your cross. Okay? Deny yourself. Bear the cross. So, uh, it says here, and whoever does not bear his cross. Well, the cross, what does it represent? The cross represents death. So, we must die to self. If you saw someone carrying a cross during the Roman period... You knew he was dying and he wasn't coming back. It was the last time you're seeing him. That guy is going to death. So you knew that. So that's what he's telling you. Die to self. Bear your cross. Okay? Uh, and come after me. Follow me. Submit to me. If not, you can't be to my disciple. And it's harsh. But he's telling you flat out how, what you need to do. Okay? And then he says, Now, for which of you who are building a tower does not sit, sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid down the foundation and it's not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to uh, build and was not able to finish. So they're laughing at him, they're mocking at him because he could not finish the tower. The tower basically was, in those times, over your vineyard, over your harvest, you had a tower so you can overlook your crop. And uh, it's saying that you, know, you started it, you couldn't finish it, you didn't count the cost, and then he gives the example of the king. He says, if you're a king and you have 10,000 and the other guy has 20,000, didn't you count the cost? And if you did, you, you, send, you send a delegate out there to try to make peace because he has 20,000 men. You only have 10. He's outnumbering you by 10,000 men. So basically, it's common sense. So he's telling you here, have common sense. It's not that Jesus Christ is rejecting you from accepting him or saying, don't accept me or you're not worthy enough. That's not what he's saying. Let's not misconstrue this. What he's saying is that you must be knowledgeable and understand the cost of following Jesus Christ. Because no one that looks back to the plow is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus says that. Now that doesn't mean you're not going to make any mistakes. That doesn't mean also it's not a license to sin. What he's saying is, is you submit to him, to his word, and you allow Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit to continuously change you. As you put your part, you submit, you examine yourself, and you die to self, examine yourself every day. That's a powerful scripture. I do that all the time. Examine yourself. And if you're honest, you know that you have to change. But that's what Jesus is saying here. Count the cost. You will die to self. It won't be easy. That's why I laugh at, at the world when they say, oh, but you Christians are all the same. You guys all mess up. And you, and there's no difference. And you know what? That may be the case. But I'll tell you what. Try to walk in my shoes. Try to constantly be denying yourself, denying yourself, denying yourself. It's like you're being sifted. It's like you're being sifted. But you know what? It's a, you know, they cuss you out. You can't, you can't cuss them out. They're harsh on you. You got to be kind. They're, you know, you got to pray for your enemies. You got to turn the other cheek. I mean, come on. We're not built this way. The world trains us differently, and we must allow, through the renewing of the mind, through the Word of God, 
and submitting to the word, to the Holy Spirit. You are a disciple of Christ. God is working in your life and you're dying to self. But count the cost. Many of you out there have just gone and have, 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 have gone up to the front, said a little prayer and think that you're saved. You may have done it when you were seven or 10 years old. Your mom, go up there and do it. A boyfriend or girlfriend, go up there and do it. And you did it, but your heart's not in it. You know what? You're probably not saved. Your fruits will show it. I'm, I can't judge your heart, but I'm telling you that the fruits will be evident. Okay? Faith without works is dead faith. So we know that uh, you have, have to count the cost. You must die to self. Okay? You must continue to grow in maturity in the faith. Okay? To the end. Endure to the end, people. Because if you walk away from your faith, you have given up your salvation. Not that Jesus Christ, uh, not that Jesus Christ took it away, you gave it up. And we read that in the scriptures today. I made my points. So endure to the end. Paul said it, and he wasn't boasting. He just knew that he did it. I ran the race. I kept the faith. Powerful words. So we must endure to the end. Do not deceive yourself. You can't lose your salvation, but not because Christ took it away. You chose to walk away. You didn't count the cost. You know that we're going to be persecuted, and you know that we're going to be hated, and you know that God is going to mold you, break you, build you back up, make you stronger, and that's just the way God works. Okay, it's boot camp. We're not here to raise men and women who are soft. This is an army. This is God. And he's raising you. First and foremost, I'm a pastor. And I'm going to tell you how it is. You need to prepare yourself. Be alert. Be prepared. And pray that on that day that you will be strong enough to withhold persecution. Okay? And whatever God brings our way. And we will rejoice in the spirit of the Lord. We will rejoice. Because God is the glue who keeps everything together. There's no reason for us to be unglued. We believe in Christ. We believe in his promises. We know the end. We know that we're victorious. There's no reason to fear. Every book in the Bible says, do not be afraid. Do not fear or do not be afraid. So there's no reason for you to come unglued. Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus Christ is the only name that you're going to be saved under. And Jesus Christ loves you and wishes that you repent. For all you unbelievers, if you don't have Christ, I'll tell you what. It's a fearful thing to be in front of the living God. And one day we will all stand before God. So if you are not saved, if you just said a little prayer, if you're living the way you think that you can live, you better think again. It's time to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he has appointed me and several others for this appointed time for us to be the watchmen, for us to preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ, and for us to preach repentance and to be aware that he's coming like a thief in the night. We won't expect it. Be ready. Count the cost of following Jesus Christ, knowing that you will suffer. Because if I paint a picture that's all rosy, when tribulation and hard times come, you're going to run because you're not going to be strong enough. And we're here to raise up men and women in the army of God. God bless you. I love you. Praise God. Glory to God forever. This is Pastor Frank. See you guys soon. I love you all.